As a boy, Antonio Banderas had dreams of sporting success, but after a broken foot destroyed his hopes of playing soccer professionally, he turned his attention to acting. For his first Hollywood movie role, he had to learn his lines phonetically because he didn't speak English. Needless to say, it didn't lead to a great performance, but his screen presence was undeniable and paved the way for a long and successful career, which began as the youngest member of the National Theatre of Spain's troupe, where he was a stage actor. You have to be very ready and very secure of what you're doing, otherwise you come to the theatre every night like you're going to be executed, and you, nobody wants to do that. After starring alongside big-name actors in films like Philadelphia, Interview with the Vampire, The Vampire Chronicles, and Evita, Banderas got his big break in The Mask of Zorro. I think Zorro is the only one Spanish hero created in Hollywood. So the fact of being filming in Mexico, in a Spanish land, for me is a big support. It's just everything, the architecture, the people, the culture, the folklore, everything that I have around is, is, is supporting the figure of Zorro as a Spanish hero. In the film, Banderas plays the apprentice of the original Zorro, played by Sir Anthony Hopkins. The enormity of acting opposite such an acclaimed actor didn't escape him. When you are in front of an actor like that, the uh, first couple of days, believe me, the, your legs shake a little bit. It's kind of, wow. Despite his obvious awe in working with Sir Anthony, the film's director, Martin Campbell, found Antonio to be completely professional on set. The truth is that he's a very fine actor, and one of his great sort of attributes is a sense of humour. He really does have a sense of humour, and that comes across, because it is a funny film. There's a lot of humour in the movie. And combining his physical prowess with his acting ability, his sense of humour, and a sense of compassion. I mean, he's got everything. And of course, that fantastic tension and chemistry with Catherine Zeta-Jones made the screen sizzle. And she loved the experience. Antonio has so much energy. It's unbelievable. And also a generous energy, you know, as an actor. He's got so generous. It's, it's so nice to work with him. And just, you know, we had such fun in the training, you know, and he's just, got great ideas and he's he's always busy you know he's just I just love that just like you know you think my god I your energy level comes up you know I've got a lot of energy too so together we're like you know <laughs> a bit crazy an athletic man Antonio did many of the stunts himself and took the preparation seriously he learned to ride a horse and trained with the Spanish Olympic fencing team learning with steel swords and then changing to aluminium for the movie Surf fighting is a little bit like riding a bicycle. Once you learn it, you, you don't forget that. Um, basically what we do is just to learn uh, all the choreographies, uh, knowing at the same time that we have source in our hands that is potentially dangerous. And when you're working with those things uh, for 14 hours, the uh, situation starts getting funny. People getting out of focus and source going everywhere, even the eyes. So uh, it's fun and it's not fun. What was fun was Spy Kids. In 2001, Bandera starred as a secret agent parent whose kids come to the rescue. We have a lot of uh, uh, fairy, tale, fairy tales in literature that probably may look like this, but we don't see this so much in movies. It's a mixture between uh, uh, Gothic and, and, and Gaudi. We, I'm doing almost this movie also to me, um, for my baby. Uh, she's three years and a half. By the time that the movie opens, she's going to be probably four or four or something. And, uh, and the first thing that I'm going to do is just to take her to the movie theatre to watch Papi uh, playing like a kid. The film was a huge success and went on to become a franchise. We thought that we were making a movie for kids only. And the, the surprise came when we started receiving the, the feedback from the people who went to see the movie. And the parents, uh, I remember parents telling me, Normally I go with my kids to the movie theater and they just yawn the whole time. And it, it was not the case with the Spy Kids. The, the parents, they seem to have a, a great time. There are winks of an eye all the time, you know, for parents in the movie theater, in this movie. Especially the character, I think, uh, Carla Gugino and, and myself played in the movie. I think uh, they go in that direction just to appeal to, to parents too, you know. To little things that their kids may not catch, but, but parents immediately, uh, they know what they're talking about. A devoted parent, Antonio has a daughter, Stella, with actress Melanie Griffith. And fatherhood appears to have affected both the roles he chooses and his attitude to work. 
in the days that we are living in, in the world that we are living in. I think those movies are not only fun. I think those movies uh, today are necessary for many people, you know. And, um, and also it's fun and uh, got a lot of comedy all the way through. In 2004, Banderas once again teamed up with director Robert Rodriguez and an all-star cast in Once Upon a Time in Mexico. The movie plays almost like a rock and roll, the first one. Uh, like a rock and roll record. You can just go uh, scene by scene and independently, one from each other, they, they make sense. They are this kind of visual fantasy, action visual fantasy. If Pedro Almodovar is Bolero and, uh, and Stanley Kubrick is Stravinsky, I suppose that Robert Rodriguez is just pure rock and roll heavy metal. As usual, Antonio was keen to do his own stunts and he got his way. I remember Antonio was saying, because he just started shooting, and he was like, when am I going to do some big stunts? I haven't done any big stunts yet, but let me to work. When he came down after doing that hotel escape, he said, you don't have to make me sweat anymore. <laughs> His hands were trembling from, help, from holding on and from holding up Salma. And just from just having to hold himself up that whole day, you know, it was, it was pretty physically, very physically demanding, but it looks fantastic, because you can see they're there, they're swinging, and they're on the side of this building, and there's, that's it, we're in Mexico, man. There's no stage, there's no pads, because we're looking straight down at the, at the street. Then Antonio featured in another hugely successful kids franchise when he lent his voice to the character of Puss in Boots in Shrek 2. The swashbuckling cat went on to become a favorite of many. I think my favorite thing in the entire movie is Puss in Boots. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of Antonio Banderos, and in my next life, I will look like him and sound like him. He is funny and charming, and that little cat is so sweet that I, I, I want to take that cat home and have him be my pet. I have the opportunity, actually, in this movie of taking a little laugh on Zorro, Zorro's character. Serious, arrogant, brilliant, very sly. And, and uh, in this character, what I try to do is just to actually laugh with myself a little bit. So um, the action collaborates perfect for the character, which is supposed to be, to be from Spain. And um, just to make him a little bit softer and play with a cartoon quality. And his distinctive voice lent itself perfectly to the character. But for Antonio, there's more to Puss in Boots than how he sounds. It was very well conceived, and uh, all I had to do is just to uh, hint half a voice, and, uh, and that was very good, but, uh, but the character was already a, a winner. I, I remember that because when they called me for the first time, they showed me in a big room, you know, the whole entire movie, but uh, just with drawings and on the wall. And when I saw the cat, I just fell in love with him immediately, uh, way before I even, even put the voice on him. He got a very strong personality. And, uh, and uh, in a body that doesn't correspond to that. <laughs> the body is very sweet, very little. You want to cuddle him, but the guy is totally out of his body <laughs> in terms of how he behaves and how he presents himself to the world. And that, that contrast, I think, made the cat very appealing. The opportunity to go further with the character than he ever had before was just one of the things he liked about being involved with animation. It's a totally different process to anything that I have done before in my life. It's definitely fun and I understand the success of the first part is also because of the team that they have here. It's brilliant and uh, brilliant not only in what they do, drawing or in the computer animation, the computer wizards that they may have there, you imagine they are there, is the cre creative process of the whole uh, movie, what it makes this very shining, very brilliant. The success of the film meant all of a sudden Antonio had a new legion of fans. The popularity of the character has seen the slating of a film centred around him titled Puss in Boots. Every woman since I have done this character, they look, I love your cat. They don't say I love Zorro anymore. <laughs> of course, we know Antonio for playing those passionate characters, but in real life, he believes in something deeper than passion. At the beginning, especially of a relationship, I think uh, passion and, and, and all the irrational uh, size of love that you may imagine comes to you at the beginning. I think there is a, even a, a chemical reaction in your brain. I read about something. Oh, I, sure. you know, the people feel more energetic, more alive, uh, more themselves, right? The, but um, passion for me, the 
and my point of view has a specific time. After that time, he goes to different states in that relationship. His marriage to Melanie Griffith is one of the enduring relationships of Hollywood. He first saw her in a film, Something Wild, and later told a Spanish magazine that he'd like to meet her. He directed her in his directorial debut, Crazy in Alabama, in which their daughter also had a role. So what does he think is the key to a successful relationship? Um, I, th I think the secret is just uh, to learn to love in the everyday life. In the everyday life, where the good and the bad is all together. You know, not in the big, passionate, pink world, but down here to Earth. We were both coming from uh, failing relationships, and we both learned pretty much about that. I think, as I said before, there is a concept uh, totally misused in these days. It's called love word that people just forgot and we have love for each other and that's why we can just overcome every crisis and every obstacle that we may find in our way. And getting over any crisis or obstacle seems to be what Antonio Banderas has managed to do with his career. His charisma, sense of humour and charm have seen him play everything from a passionate Latin lover to an ogre slaying cat and his ability to evolve has seen him remain one of Hollywood's true stars. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.